hear a story from a brother whom God has worked so powerfully in his life. Would you welcome Fred Murrow as he comes to share with us this morning? Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? I just want to thank the pastor for letting me share my testimony with you today. Uh, first of all, my name's Fred Murrow. I've been a member at this church for about 35 years. I love this church. I love my pastor. I love uh, all the members here. All of you have been so supportive to me. And I've titled this, Too Blessed to Complain. I grew up in a Christian family learning how to love and serve the Lord. For years, I observed my parents' meaningful faith. I was taught about God and about what his son Jesus Christ did on Calvary. I began a relationship with Christ at a young age. And when I had children, I taught them about the Lord. Years later, that solid foundation of faith built in my life would be severely tested. My road to cancer began in March 2006 when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I was admitted to Duke University and had, had robotic surgery. Follow-up tests revealed a complete recovery with no future treatments necessary. On Christmas Eve 2008, I became very sick, so sick I could hardly sit up. The day after Christmas, I was admitted to the hospital it was discovered that I had pneumonia. For five weeks, I remained in the hospital undergoing a slew of tests. As it seemed I wasn't getting better, my doctor ordered a scan. From this, it was discovered that pneumonia wasn't my most critical problem. I had lung cancer. Pneumonia was a providence of God to undercover this dreaded disease in my lung. 209 began with surgery to remove one lobe of my lung and a series of chemo and radiation treatments in an effort to treat the cancer. A year after that, I would also be diagnosed with breast cancer. Undergoing more surgery to, to remove my breast, right breast, male breast cancer is not as common as we sometimes think. I had complications from that sur surgery of bleeding, so it was back to Duke Hospital for a recheck. When I told the doctor my right arm felt strained, he ordered a scan, at which revealed malignant brain tumor. So more surgery was forthcoming to remove this tumor, or rather most of it. As it was deep embedded, it was not possible to remove it all at as it would have been a risk to cause memory loss. I think it was at that, this time the oncologist advised me to make sure my affairs were in order. Following this surgery, I had radiation treatments to further shrink what was left of, of the brain tumor. At this point, I was thin, bald, and barely getting around with a walker. In the summer of 2011, I once again contacted pneumonia, still fighting cancer in various organs of my body. I spent about 45 days in the cancer center, receiving radiation and various other medication, looking very much like my life was about over. In 2011, when I was battling breast, brain, and lung cancer, my son Jeff, who had been diagnosed with gallbladder cancer in early 2007, went for his scan, semi-annual scan and checkup. After four years of clean scans, he received the bad news that his cancer had returned with tumors in his lung and liver. Now both of us, father and son, were in a, the fight of our lives. However, in 20, August 2012, I underwent a gamma knife procedure for my brain tumor, which had begun to grow again. This targets a specific area and is laser non-invasive surgery. It's not over until God says it's over. Through all the devastating news, my family and I began to lean 
solely on the Lord. We grew close, closer to God and one another. My Sunday school class and my great church rallied around me. And church congregations around the world lifted me in prayer. Upon receiving the news about Jeff's return of cancer, I made it a goal to set a good example for my son. I needed to be a positive influence in the midst of fear and uncertainty. I prayed constantly for my son and tell him how much he is loved. In many ways, our struggles has drawn us closer together. Cancer has made me rethink my priorities. I read the Bible more, I pray more, I learn how important it is to lean on the strong arm of God. Throughout this series of bouts and complications, I came to understand the peace of God and the message in Isaiah 26, 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Jeff and I have found that the Lord has opened doors of opportunity that we might not have had if not for cancer. You can share things about God when you've had multiple cancers. We have found a new platform for sharing our faith. We speak to our doctors and nurses, who, by the way, many are also Christian. We speak to our friends and co-workers. We've told our story in the newspaper and also on TV. And the outpouring of cards and encouragement from the newspaper article has been overwhelming. While I try and stay positive, Jeff's cancer concerns me. It is not getting better, and only in his mid-40s, Jeff is the father of three young children. Just as I was placed on prayer list around the country, those same people are now on their knees for Jeff. I'm what doctors consider a miracle. Still alive after all this. While my cancer is not gone, it is stable. The drug I am taking is helping, and I get scans about every month or so. There are things in life I don't understand, but one thing I do know is that God's love never fails. The last few years have taught me to love people more and rely on God in everything. I also know that cancer cannot destroy my hope of heaven. It cannot reduce eternal life. It cannot stop courage. It cannot hinder faith. It cannot invade the soul. It cannot cripple love, and it cannot shatter hope. In the, old, in the words of an old song, I don't need to understand. I just need to hold his hand. If you are aware, if you are away from God today, or maybe never have trusted him as your personal savior, today would be a perfect time to trust him. This could be your story as cancer or other devastation could be in your near future. But above all, we all need the Lord. If you, I have committed my son to him, but many years ago, he gave his son for us all. Remember, you are not alone. Thank you.